Great, thank you. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here to talk to you uh, about the clinical studies of carbitocin nasal spray, an investigational treatment for hyperphagia in patients with prader willi syndrome. So let me first start with some background. Um, one of the characteristics of prader willi syndrome is a deficiency of a natural occurring hormone called oxytocin. It has been consistently found that people with PWS have fewer oxytocin producing neurons. Uh, in a mouse model of PWS called PAGLE2, improvement was seen when the mice were, were given oxytocin. In humans, the hormone oxytocin regulates several functions in the body, including hunger, anxiety, social behavior, and bonding. And oxytocin deficiency is associated with hyperphagia and behavioral issues in people with PWS. So carbitocin is an investigational medicine that's very much like the natural occurring hormone oxytocin, but it's thought to bind to oxytocin receptors with greater sensitivity than oxytocin itself. That means it has a potentially more potent activation of the receptors on cells that oxytocin activates. And we are looking at a potential role of carbitocin nasal spray uh, for the treatment of hyperphagia in, in PWS. Um, so some of you may be aware that a clinical study of carbitocin nasal spray for hyperphagia and PWS um, called CARE PWS was conducted by a company called Levo Therapeutics. It was a phase three study, which means it was intended to produce efficacy and safety results that could, be, that could lead to approval uh, by the FDA. So the study included 119 participants between the ages of seven and 19 who were treated with carbitocin nasal spray in one of two doses or placebo for eight weeks. The study unfortunately failed to meet the primary objective to show improvement of hyperphagia at the higher dose. However, in a separate analysis, the low dose carbitocin treatment showed improvement in hyperphagia. In January, 2022, the FDA denied the approval of carbitocin for PWS, citing insufficient efficacy at the high dose and recommended an additional study confirming the efficacy of the low dose be performed. So carbitocin is, is still an investigational drug and the safety and efficacy of, of this drug has not yet been established or approved by health authorities um, in or outside um, of the US. Um, so Acadia acquired levotherapeutics and we are conducting that phase three study to investigate the safety and efficacy of the low dose carbitocin for hyperphagia and PWS. The goal is to collect data on the benefit and safety of carbitocin nasal spray to support another application to have the drug approved for use in clinical care. The main study is 12 weeks long. Half the participants will receive carbitocin nasal spray and the other half will receive a placebo. Both are given three times a day and participants will be randomly selected to get carbitocin or placebo and neither they nor the doctor nor Acadia will know which one they're getting. There will be a, a 170 participants, so 85 in each group. And enrollment in the study began in November of 2023 and is ongoing currently in the UK, Canada and the US and will begin in some EU countries. After um, 12 weeks, participants may enroll in an open label extension study, another study in which every participant receives carbitocin nasal spray. Here are some of the key criteria that must be met for a participant to be eligible to enter the study. The study is for ages five to 30 for people who have PWS and evidence of a mutation causing the disease, who have hyperphagia characterized by an increased appetite with decreased satiety accompanied by food seeking behavior. Participants cannot enter if they have an active respiratory tract infection or an cerebrovascular disease or a history of brain trauma or epilepsy. And if they've started a new food related intervention within the previous month, or if they participated in another research study with another treatment within the previous six months. Other assessments will be done and the participant's medical history will be reviewed to determine uh, eligibility. So here's a diagram of the Compass PWS study showing the fact that half the participants will be randomly assigned to get carbitocin and the other half 
will be randomly assigned to placebo, both nasal sprays. There will be five clinic visits in the study, including a screening visit to check to the participant qualifies, um, a baseline visit at which carbitocin or placebo is started, and then three more clinic visits at week two, eight, and 12. And then there will be the opportunity to continue to the open label study that will be ongoing for up to 36 months. So the, the Compass PWS study has a website, compasspws.com. And this website has information on the main study as well as the open label extension. It also um, has a, um, access to where, identifying locations where eligible participants can join the study. And there's a link to a video on the website that talks about the study um, and how it's conducted in further detail. So encourage everyone to, to try to check that out. And that concludes. <laughs>